Okay, good morning everyone. So, uh, welcome back to ACAD mode. So, kahapon pala may labs na kayo, may pasok na kayo. No? So, uh, I hope everything went well in the lab. I just heard that um, some lecture sections uh, were not able to uh, to conduct the live sessions kasi may mga technical difficulties yung, mem yung faculty members. So, but anyway, hope uh, you, you, uh, you already watched the recordings. But yeah, which is about the last uh, portion of the study guide for week three, which is about um, uh, predicates with more than one quantifier. So if you haven't done your readings about that, please kindly do so. Kasi baka may encounter natin sila for this week. So last week, yun nga, pinag-usapan natin yung um, isang klase ng, or yung mas specific case of propositions where it, wherein we have quantifiers and predicates. Uh, these are just propositions that have specific um, subjects, right? And we basically look at their truth values. So they are also, uh, they are quantified. So we have universal and existential quantifiers. So for this week, we will uh, we'll check the validity of this quantified uh, of uh, arguments involving quantified predicates. So parang babalik tayo dun sa ginawa natin two weeks back which is about proving uh, validity uh, more on the formal and informal side, uh, sorry, direct and indirect method of uh, proving validity. So, pero ngayon, mer ang, ang titignan na natin ay case para dun sa mga may quantifiers, right? And then hopefully we can also start talking about the bread and butter of Math 101, which is methods of proof, which we will do for the next uh, two more weeks. So, two and a half weeks for methods of proof and then for formal proof of validity, we'll probably have one meeting, okay? So for this week, here are our learning objectives. First, uh, you should be able to, uh, to provide formal proof of validity of quantified arguments. Hopefully we can do this today. Uh, also establish invalidity of quantified arguments. So sana matapos din natin ngayon. And then hopefully we can start it on Thursday uh, prove mathematical statements using the most appropriate methods of proof. But basically, for the rest of your um, stay in the program, in the math, applied math uh, program, you will be proving mathematical statements if you are an MST student. Then a bunch of your courses will also require you to prove mathematical statements. So I say um, objective number three is one of the bedrocks of Math 101. So for this week, uh, we'll use um, pages 50 to, I think, 64 of the work text, which I, um, which I have here in my PDF. And then we'll have, uh, at the end of the study guide, you have worksheet number four, which will be due on Monday, right before midnight. And there are um, three items in here. Okay. okay. So let's start. So, dun sa proof of quantified statements, hindi na tayo gagawa ng true tables. Kasi sa true tables, remember, we just look at at least the cases wherein you have true premises and uh, uh, and then show that it will give us a true conclusion, right? Kasi bawal yung true premises implying a false conclusion because that conditional statement will be false. Now, when we want to check the validity of... Um, quantified statements. So this is still the same uh, concept as validity of proposition of arguments last time, where we want to show that the structure of the uh, argument is valid. That is, you have true premises implying a true conclusion. So pag sa quantified statements, medyo hindi na natin siya kayang gawin via true table because remember, each of the predicates will have a specific truth value depending on the, the subject or the term of the predicate. So, lalo na kung yung domain ay may infinitely many or even just a finite but a large number of elements, mahirap nang gumawa ng truth table kasi exponentially mag uh, dadami yung number of rows. So, that's why for validity of quantified statements, he, we use a, form, a formal proof. Okay? Now, Susundin pa rin niya yung uh, paraan natin ng pag-prove ng validity formally from that we learned uh, two weeks back na meron tayong um, statements and then we have reasons on the other column. But this time, there are additional steps that we need to do because we need to take care of the quantifiers first. 
So basically, you can think of uh, proof of validity to start with taking away all of those quantifiers and then proceed with the formal proof as we have done before. And then at the end, we want to, um, to get back the quantifiers. So meron dalawang additional layers. So umpisa, tatanggalin natin yung quantifiers. Tapos sa dulo, ibabalik natin yung mga quantifiers if necessary. Kung yung statement natin, uh, kung yung conclusion ay merong, uh, merong uh, quantifiers involved, right? And to do that, we have here, um, I think, four more um, rules na pwede natin gamitin. The first one is universal instantiation or universal specification. And it works if your quantifier is universal, as the name implies. So yung universal instantiation, nag instantiate ka lang o nag specify ka lang ng isang element ng domain. Okay? Kasi it will work if your premise or if you have a statement which has the universal quantifier. So kung dun sa argument, merong isang line ng sabi for all x, p of x. So totoo siya sa lahat ng element x ng domain. So pwede ka mag-specify ng isang specific element for the sake of the proof. Right? Kasi yun nga yung plano natin, tanggalin muna yung mga quantifiers. So basically the easiest way is if you have a universal quantifier, you can pick any element of the domain. Right? So yung A, variable lang siya, parang pang substitute natin sa X, kasi usually si X yung ginagamit dun sa actual statements. But if you want to use in a proof the statement P, so we will instantiate or get a random or an arbitrary element of the domain. So kaya pwedeng pag may for all, via UI, dun sa two column proof nyo, pwede kayo magkaroon ng row na P of A. Where A is a symbol, that uh, will stand for an arbitrary element of the set, okay? Now, the second is universal generalization. Ito naman yung gagamitin natin sa dulo. So, once we have, uh, we have gotten rid of all of those uh, quantifiers, we'll do the thing we did two weeks ago. And then, ang problema natin, paano kapag ka yung conclusion ay may, um, kapag ka may quantifiers yung conclusion, right? So the thing here is, if you have in your argument a statement P about an arbitrary element A of the domain, then you can conclude via universal generalization that for all X, P of X. So, madali naman siyang tandaan or sundan based dun sa pangalan. Universal generalization, kapag ka dun sa argument mo, meron kang line na totoo, si statement P about A, where A is an arbitrary element of the domain. So the catch here is C. Symbol A, dapat nanggaling siya sa universal instantiation. So kung si A nanggaling sa universal instantiation, then sa dulo ng argument o nung, uh, nung proof mo, pwede kang gumamit ng universal generalization to generalize yung statement P about A to a statement P about all element X of the domain, okay? And then, of course, in parallel to this uh, two types of rules that we can use for universal quantifiers, we have existential instantiation and existential generalization. Um, so for existential instantiation, this will get rid of the existential quantifier. So kung dun sa premises, meron kang there exists an X such that P of X, pwede kang mag-instantiate kay A, assuming si A yung property na binabanggit netong premise na to. So, if the premises merong X na nag exist such that P about X is true, then you can instantiate it to P of A. And we will assume that A is one of those Xs alluded to in the premise. Okay? Pero kailangan natin i-take note kasi... Uh, magiging crucial, pag tinanggal natin yung quantifier, it will play a big role when we get the quantifier back. So dito si A ay hindi na isang arbitrary element ng domain kasi nanggaling siya sa isang existentially quantified predicate. Si A will stand for an element X that satisfies P. Kasi alam natin hindi lahat ng element ng domain nakakasatisfy ng property P. So si A, pinili lang natin via existential instantiation to be one of those X's 
that satisfy property P. Okay. And then similarly, kapag ka meron kang EI, so pag tinanggal natin yung quantifier sa isang proof of validity via EI, so tapos yung conclusion niya ay merong existential quantifier, then we can get back the there exist that we have gotten rid of earlier by using existential generalization. So kung dun sa argument, meron kang sinabi na si P about A is true for a specific individual constant A then you can write in your proof other exists. So sana clear yung paggamit, pagtatanggal, at pag, pagbabalik ng uh, quantifier. Ito yung additional layer dun sa proof of validity. So a UI always, uh, always goes with a UG, and an EI always goes with an EG. So pag UI yung pinantanggal natin ng quantifier, yung pambalik ng quantifier, if necessary, would be a UG. Now, if yung pinantanggal natin ay EI, yung pambalik sa kanya ay EG. Okay? Now, let's see this. Okay. Example 34. All UP students are intelligent. Richard is a UP student. Therefore, Richard is intelligent. Okay. Now, Dito natin gagamitin yung natutunan natin from last week and two weeks back. So the first step is to uh, to symbolize everything and translate it into uh, into symbols or to formal statements. So here I, uh, we need to declare our variables. So here we consider the statement u about x to be x is being a student. I about x is x is uh, is intelligent. Nahiya pa yan, no? Dapat X is a UP student. So kindly correct your notes. Kasi ang sabi rito, all UP students are intelligent. Richard is a UP student. And then pakidagdag, i-declare din natin kung ano yung variable for a specific constant. Right? Halimbawa si Richard, i-denote natin siya by the little r. Right? Para lang clear. Now, if you symbolize this, and again, let's try to uh, to make sense of this substitution. So, all UP students are intelligent. So that means if you are a student, uh, if you are a UP student, then you are automatically intelligent. So that means, and that will work for all uh, for all students, right? So that means for all uh, for all x, u of x implies i of x, right? Kung UP student ka, automatic na intelligent ka. And this will work for all student X. Okay. Then second statement, Richard is a UP student. So here, this is uh, the use of the uh, statement U, but for a specific person or a specific element of the domain. So the second premise would be U of R. So uh, R, Richard, is a UP student. And then the conclusion is the last sentence preceded by the uh, by the keyword therefore. So Richard is intelligent. So our conclusion is a specific statement, a specific uh, a specific uh, case of the second statement I about X. So R Richard is intelligent. So con yung conclusion natin ay therefore I of R lamang. Okay. So let's take a look at the premises. Isa dun sa mga premises ay my quantifier. So that means we need to get rid of the universal quantifier first. And we can do that by um, the, first, um, the first rule that we have seen uh, this morning. Kaya lang, yung conclusion ay wala namang quantifier. So once in our arguments, we already have a line that says I of R, then we are done. We don't need to, to get the uh, quantifier back kasi wala naman sa conclusion Na, uh, wala namang quantified statement dun sa conclusion. Okay? So I think the proof is supplied here. Let's just uh, let's just go about it kasi simple pa lang naman yung statement. Okay. As usual, the first lines of your uh, proof should comprise of the premises. So we have two premises, so they will occupy the first two lines in our proof. So the first premise is the uh, universally quantified predicate. For all x, u of x implies i of x. 
Second line is U of R, a specific case of the statement U. So we are just talking about Richard on the second statement. Okay. And then that's it. And our goal is to have an I of R in our uh, in our proof. Okay. Now the first step is to get rid of the quantifier first. Okay. So there is a for all here. So it means when pwede tayong pumili ng kahit anong element ng domain na ipapang substitute natin kay x sa statement number 1 para makuha yung specific uh, statement in line number 3 para lang mawala yung for all x. Okay. Now the thing here is that look at our objective. Our objective is to show that i of r is true. So we need to get an i of r in our specific uh, in our in our proof, right? So that means I will choose to which uh, variable will I specify the first statement. Kasi kailangan ko magkaroon ng I of R dun sa, dun sa proof natin, dun sa dulo ng proof. So ibig sabihin, since sa statement 1, nag-work siya sa kahit anong X, pwede akong pumili ng kahit anong specific X. And again, I can do this because I have a universal quantifier. So what I'll do is to choose or to instantiate the first statement to the variable r because it is universal anyway. So pwede akong pumili na kahit anong pang substitute kay x. And that was, uh, that's done in line number three, wherein we specified statement one to the, to the term r. Kasi nga, ang end goal natin, i of r. So I'll take advantage of the for all I'll choose x equals r, and I'll have statement number three. And the reason there is from statement one by universal instantiation. Okay. At the power ng universal instantiation, pwede nyo siyang palitan ng kahit anong variable. Okay. And then madali na to. So you look at statement three. You have statement two. So nakuha na natin yung antecedent ng ng line three from line number two, so we can apply modus ponens, okay? So that's why we have the last line here coming from lines two and three via the modus, uh, the modus ponens rule, okay? And we stop here because the conclusion is just I of R, so we are done. So hindi na natin kailang magbalik ng quantifier. But if it is needed, then we can use, um, or actually hindi pala kasi specific to sa isang R, right? So kahit kung kailangan ko magka for all, I cannot have a for all here using universal generalization. Kasi itong statement I of R ay hindi true sa isang arbitrary or random element of the domain. Totoo lang siya para kay Richard. Okay? So kaya alam ko na kahit kailangan, hindi ko hindi ko hindi ako pwedeng mag universal generalization mula dito. Because this statement is true only for specific value of the term, which is R. Okay. Pwede ako mag existential generalization, but I cannot do a universal generalization because what we got here is again a specific statement uh, or a statement about the specific term. Okay. Here by yung first example. Okay, thank you. Kailan ko yung mga feelers nato para magsip ng coffee. So, <laughs> all right. Anyway, let's try another one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, show the following argument is valid by giving a formal proof. Translate first the argument into symbols. So, here are our arguments. Everyone who asks receives. Simon did not receive, therefore Simon did not ask. So let me just first um, define the variables. So we consider the following. Um, A of X would be X asks. R of X, X receives. And then I let little s to be Simon. Okay. And then let's try to write our argument. Okay, uh, how would you translate the first statement? Any volunteer? 
everyone who asks uh, receive. I think the first one is Sirunona Rea. Rinig na po, sir. Yep. Ano po, for all x such that a of x, then r of x po. Okay, thank you, Rhea. So let's see. So everyone, so I mean, that's, um, that's uh, a clue that we are dealing with a universal quantifier. And then kapag ka nag-ask ka daw, automatic na mag receive ka. That's basically the spirit of the first sentence. So I guess Rhea is right. Uh, a of x implies r of x. So, um, oh, by the way, when you try to verbally give uh, this translation, pwedeng wala na yung such that. Kapag ka universal, uh, tanggalin nyo na yung such that dun sa translation. Okay? So, you can just say for all x, a of x implies r of x. Yung such that usually ginagamit lang natin siya kapag ka existential yung statement. Okay? Now, how about statement number two? Any takers? Uh, Mary Rose... Mary Rose, dalawa nga pala yung Mary natin, at least two. So Mary Rose, the, you want to answer, se, uh, translate the second sentence? Uh, for the second sentence po, not R O S po. Uh, thank you. Okay, because the second sentence says Simon did not receive. So it is a statement about Simon, so dapat may specific variable S tayo. And then receive, so statement R. Pero hindi daw. So may tilde. So may negation. Okay, that's right. And how about the last sentence, which happens to be our conclusion? Uh, yes, uh, Kiefer? Hello po, sir. Um, Hi. There, therefore, uh, not A of S po. Not A, A of S. S. Okay, thank you. So conclusion, uh, Simon did not ask, so not A of S. Okay, great. Thank you, guys. Uh, so ito yung statement na gusto natin i-prove. Now let's write the formal proof. Okay. So I'll just have the first two lines as our, um, as our premises. One, two premises. <laughs> Okay, step number three, any volunteer? Aha, uh -huh. Adrian. One po, uh, universal is temptation. So, A of X implying RX. Okay, great. Hi. So, bucket S yung dynamic mong variable sa pag instantiate. Or maybe somebody else can answer it. Uh, bakit kaya S yung ginamit ni Adrian? Or yung sinadjust ni Adrian na UI? Kasi sa UI, kahit ano, pwede mong ipang substitute. Uh, yes, uh, Mary Mitzi. Ayan po, kasi yun po yung gusto natin i-prove na yung about Simon po. Kaya yun si Simon po yung gagamitin natin na element. Okay, great. Thank you. So... Uh, and then, dahil pwede mo naman kasing piliin kasi universal yung statement, mag-work siya kahit kanino. So, pwede mong gamitan talaga si Simon. Alright? Okay, next step. Okay, uh, Imisan. Uh, for next po is not A of S. Uh-huh. Why? Tapos, um, 3 to empty po. Empty or modus tollens. Okay. Thank you. So whenever, uh, that's right. So whenever you have the denial of the consequent, ibig sabihin, hindi totoo yung, uh, hindi totoo yung antecedent, right? And that's that rule is called modus tollens, right? Because R did not happen, but we know that if A happens, automatically R happens, then modus tollens rule tells us, ah, hindi nangyari si A. Kasi hindi nangyari yung R. Kasi sabi nung, uh, nung line number 3, pag nangyari si A, automatic na mangyayari si R. But from statement 2, hindi nangyari si R, so hindi pwedeng nangyari si A. Right? And that's how we get line number 4. Formally, that rule is called the rule of modus tollens. Okay, so that's our proof. Great job, guys.
let's uh, take a look at another one. Okay, now we have this one. Medyo mas complicado na than before. So let's read this, the, the actual statement. No gamblers are happy. Some idealists are happy. Therefore, some idealists are not gamblers. So we use the following variables. G stands for being a gambler, H for being happy, and I being an idealist. And then if you look at the first sentence, no gamblers are happy. So it means pag gambler ka, hindi ka daw happy. So that means for all person X, the G of X automatically implies not H, right? So pag gambler, nagpa follow na hindi happy. So G of X implies not H of X. And then second statement, some. So you know that the second statement will be existential, right? It says some idealists are happy. So merong mga tao na at the same time, na idealist at saka happy at the same time. So there exists some X such that I of X and H of X. Okay. And then the conclusion, some idealists, so we have an existential quantifier in our conclusion, are not gamblers. So there exists some person's X that is an idealist and not a gambler at the same time. Okay. So let's try to write the proof. Kasi naka na translate na siya, na symbolize na. So proof. Lines one, two, these are just premises. Okay. And then, ito pala, kapag ka yung mga premises ay parehong quantified, right? Remember, the first step is to get rid of the quantifiers. We usually start by specifying uh, or by getting rid of the existential quantifier. Okay, makita nyo bakit, uh, mamaya ba kung, uh, mamaya, makikita nyo mamaya kung bakit. Right. So, with that principle, I'm going to start with an uh, instantiation step uh, using statement number two. Kasi mangyayari, so what I'll do is have, say, maybe I can use a variable. So, I'll have I of A and H of A. This would be coming from two by existential instantiation. Okay. Nag instantiate lang ako ng state ng element ng domain na nakakasatisfy ng premise number two. Premise number two says there exists an X such that I of X and H of X are true. So therefore, I'll take one example of such an X and then I called it A. So tanda natin nag existential instantiation tayo in line number three. And then, saka ko gagamitin yung universal instantiation. Kasi gusto ko mag-work yung proof ko dun sa specific element A na ginamit ko dun sa existential instantiation. And mas okay na unahin yung EI kesa sa UI kasi pagka mag pag gagamitin ko na yung UI, pwede kong gamitin uli yung variable A dito from line number three. Kasi ini-specify ko na sa statement number, si statement number two nag-work kay element A. Specific element A of the domain. Dahil element siya ng domain, mag-work pa rin sa kanya yung statement number one. Yung for all na statement. Okay? Kaya lagi nating inuuna yung EI kesa sa UI. Kasi pagka nag-universal instantiation ka sa ito a variable A, Tapos susundan mo siya ng EI, hindi ka na sure kung yung element A na nanggaling dun sa UI ay isa dun sa mga excess na nakakasatisfy ng existential premise. Okay? Kaya mas okay na mag-specify ka ng isang element ng domain na nakakasatisfy ng existential premise bago ka mag-specify ng universally quantified argument or premise. Okay, so I hope it's clear why we always start with EI before using a UI. Okay. So with that said, I can specify statement one at the element A that we use in line number three. 
Kasi totoo siya for all x. So totoo siya para kay statement A. Or para kay term A na ginamit ko sa line number 3. So I can have here G of A implying not H of A coming from 1 universal instantiation. Okay. Okay. All good so far? And I guess that's uh, the bulk of the work. Kasi ngayon, gagamitin, gagawin na lang natin yung ginawa natin two weeks ago. So proof by, uh, proof by, mm, uh, formal proofs, right? Using the rules of inference and equivalences. So look at what we want to show. We want to show that there exists an X such that I of X and not G of X. So if we'll be able to show that I A and not G A is true, then we can use existential generalization para sa isang specific element. So, and then we can say na, ah, yung element na nag exist na yon, I x equals A. So, our goal really is to get an I A and G of A. And how can we get that? Any, uh, vo uh, any uh, volunteer? Any suggestion for line number five? What could be a nice step in the proof? Next step. Uh, yes, Kelvin? Uh, hello po, sir. Rinig po. Yep. Hi. Um, pwede po natin isimplify yung statement 3 as either mm -hmm. I of A or H of A. Mm -hmm. uh, which one Tas, do you... Ano, po, ano na lang po, I of A. Tapos, simplification. Okay. 3, three simplification. Actually, kailangan ako rin pala yung kabila. No? So, uh, sama po. ko na sa si Kelvin yung um, for 3 SP din, H A. So, kailangan kasi, kailangan kasi ilagay natin lahat ng steps dun sa proof. So, lagay ko na siya. And then, uh, line 7. Uh, Elgin, uh, you want to answer? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi. Yep. For number 7, we, for formality, we can use double negation, double negation on number 6. Double negation on number 6? Okay. Not, not H of A. So six double negation. Now this is one thing I, uh, I'm not used to doing. Parang pag double negation, di ko na siya nilalagay. Pero nung binasa ko yung vertex, naglalagay pa sila ng double negation. So, okay. If you are fine with that, you can include double negation. But sometimes, if I'm writing the proof alone, I might forget using the double negation, uh, lalo na kung magagamit ako ng baldus tollens on a negation. So, yeah, uh, for me, we can skip that, but if you want to go by the book, then include double negation. Thank you, Elgin. Uh, what would be the next step? Uh, volunteers? Oh, Jasper? Sir, ano? By modus tollens po. Uh huh. Gagamitin po yung statements from 4 and 7. Uh -huh. Tapos, 4 and 7? Uh, not G of A. Not G of A. Okay, thank you, Elgin. That's right. Modus Tollens, uh, lines 4 and 7. Uh, next step. Uh, yes, Marnie, line number 9. Um, for line number 9 po, uh, pwede na po natin gamitin yung um, number 5 po. And uh -huh. number eight, para po um, conjunction po. Okay. Wali magiging I of A and not G of A po. Okay, great. And we did that kasi alam natin yung goal natin, right? Gusto natin mapakita na there exists an X such that I, X, and not G of X. And we're working with a particular variable A. So napakita natin na I of A and not G of A. And this works for a specific element A. Hindi random si A. So specific lamang na element and domain si A kasi somewhere above, we use existential instantiation. So hindi random si A. Isa lang siyang specific element ng domain. So with that being said, ang pwede ko lang gawin dito ay existential generalization. Hindi ako pwedeng mag-universal generalization because the proof that we have just built is for a specific element of A, a specific, uh, sorry, an, a specific element A of the domain. 
because we used existential instantiation in line number three. All right. So it makes at most I can say there exists an X such that I of A, oh sorry, I of X and not G of X. And that's from nine existential generalization. Again, I cannot do a universal generalization. Kung UG, uh, kung, un kung universal quantifier yung nandun sa conclusion, hindi ko pa rin siya pwedeng gamitin. Kasi uh, yung proof natin ay nangyari lamang para sa isang element A, isang specific element of A, hindi arbitrary si A, kasi gumamit tayo ng existential instantiation. All right. So the best we can um, we can conclude from there is the existence of such an X. And that example or example of that X is the element A, which satisfies premise number two. Okay. And this ends our proof. So nakita nyo, similar pa rin to sa ginawa natin last time, meron lang additional few steps at the beginning where we get rid of all the quantifiers and at the end we're in, we put back the required quantifier. Okay, so let's look at some more examples, unless you have some questions. Uh, yes, Daniel, any questions? Uh, sir, uh, just like what we did uh, on the previous example, sir, uh, is there a need to define the element A? Um, what do you mean define? Um, isama siya dun sa declaration of variables? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so dito? Ah, hindi mo na siya kailangang ilagay kasi dun sa, dun sa statement naman wala siyang pinangalanan na specific element. So basta alam lang natin si A, isa siyang, uh, isa siyang, element, isa siyang specific element ng domain na nakakasatisfy ng premise number 2. Kaya lang hindi natin siya kilala. Hindi natin alam ano yung value talaga ni A. So kaya absent siya dun sa declaration of variables. So yeah. Wala kasing specific na pinangalanan dun sa, dun sa statement or dun sa uh, informal statement of the argument. Okay? So kaya hindi na siya kailangan dun. Unlike dun sa previous examples, meron tayong Simon, meron tayong Richard. So yun. Okay? Uh, and then there's another question. Possibly po ba na may cases na yung hinahanap na conclusion ay general at hindi existential? Ah uh, yes, yes, sir. Yeah, there could be some arguments wherein the conclusion is also uh, universally quantified. So, pwede tayo mag UG as long as random yung pagkakapili natin dun sa element uh, dun sa element ng domain. Hopefully, we can see an example like that later para mas ma-illustrate natin yung question ni uh, Esther. Uh, Daniel, you have a follow-up uh, follow question? None po. Okay. So let's try uh, exercise 37. And luckily, this is one uh, example or one instance of what Esther is asking. Na possible ba daw na for all pa rin yung statement? Okay? And yes, possible siya. Pero mag-work siya sa, pa, sa certain class lamang ng mga, ng mga statements. Uh, you see, there is a for all here in a conclusion. But luckily, sa premises ay for all din silang lahat. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, talagang posible kang makapag-conclude from the premises. Kasi kung meron dyang isang there exists lamang. So, baka imposible or mahirap na ma-prove yung for all. Kasi pag meron kang there exists dun sa argument, uh, dun sa premise, ibig sabihin, nag-work lang yon sa isang specific class or subset ng domain, pero hindi dun sa buong domain. So, kaya may, medyo mahirap. Isa siya sa mga common fallacies in reasoning. But let's see how we can do um, example 37. Hold on, guys. Okay, so let's try this. Uh-huh. Insert on the page. Okay, so if you want to improve, then still first two lines would be 
the premises the line one two premise and premise okay uh any volunteer uh line number three okay alisa Uh, for line number three, oh, B of A implies W of A. Okay. And the reason? One UI. One UI. Thank you. That's correct. So VA implying WA uh, coming from one UI. Again, the first few steps will um, will just get rid of the quantifiers. Pero ngayon, universal yung instantiation na ginawa natin kasi Statement number one is true for all x's. So it will be true for A, which is arbitrary or which is a random element of the domain. So, siguro pwede natin inote dito A is arbitrary. Para mas, um, para mas, um, um, para mas may emphasize yung point na si A is arbitrary. Or you can use another set of variables. So, siguro pwede yung gawin A, B, C. Kahit sa sarili nyong, um, uh, sa sarili nyong legends, pwede nyo gamitin yung little a, b, c para sa mga specific elements or pwede nyo gamitin si y, z, and w para sa mga arbitrary elements. But as long as it is clear to you, it's fine to use any variable. So dahil pinili ni, um, pinili ni Alisa na a yung gamitin, kahit si a ay arbitrary, then that's fine. Let's just keep at the back of our minds that A is an arbitrary element of the domain. Okay. Uh, how about the next step? Line number four. Uh, yes, Rosemary. Ano po? W A implying that Y A po. Tapos number two U I. Okay. Great. Thank you. So, nag uh, universal instantiation na naman tayo. And then, that's the beauty about universal statements. So, totoo siya sa kahit na anong elements ng domain. So, dito, nag-specify na tayo kanina ng V of A implying W of A. Right? So, pwede ko uling gamitin si statement A kasi alam ko yung premise number 2 or si term A. Kasi alam ko yung statement number 2 ay totoo sa lahat ng excess dun sa domain. Dahil totoo siya sa lahat ng excess na nasa domain, totoo siya para kay A, which I already used in statement number 3. Alright? So, pero kung there exists lang ito, kunwari there exists lang yung line number 2, kung there exists lang siya, hindi ko pwedeng gamitin uli yung variable na A na nanggaling sa UI. Kasi hindi ako sure kung, si, kung nag-work yung statement number 2 para kay variable A. Kasi number two, nag-work lang daw siya sa specific excess. And I don't know if the element A, which I arbitrarily chose above, ay kasama dun sa mga excess for which line number two happens or this modified line number two happens. Okay? Pero dahil for all, safe tayong gumamit ng same variable. Okay? And then all the quantifiers are gone. So we can go ahead with our mission and we want to show, pwede yung isulat din dito, we want to show, that y of a implies not v of a. Okay. Any uh, suggestion for line number five? Oh, yes. Uh, Daniel? <clears throat> uh, v, v of a implies not y of a. Uh, three, four uh, hypothetical syllogism. Okay, great. So hypothetical syllogism used on three and four. Okay, that's great. But we still need uh, one more step because uh, what we have now is VA implying not Y. Pero ang gusto natin ay YA implying not V of A. So what would be the next step? Uh, Mary Rose, nakasagot ka na yata. Tama nga ba? So kung nakasagot na si Mary Rose, maybe I can try Sophia next. Sophia? What would be line six? Six would be um not 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 y of a implies uh, v of a using um 
Line number five, transposition. Thank you. Uh, ano ang symbol natin sa transposition? TP nga ba? Kalimutan ko I'm yung I'm not sure din po. <laughs> oh, sige, gawin natin transposition. Okay. So, pag hindi sure, i-write out na lang natin. So, transposition, I guess it's TP. Okay, thank you, Kiefer. So, that's TP daw. Okay, TP. All right. So, and then probably, I think sinasabi ko na kung ako, yung, ako lang yung nagagawa ng proof, idiretso ko na yung line 6 ay YA implying not VA via TP. Pero you can be strict about it. Go by the books. Um, lagyan ng negation bawat isa by transposition. Kasi tama nga naman. Yun lang yung sinasabi ng, ng transposition. Nagkakaroon ng tilde sa harap ng uh, consequent at antecedent. Tapos pagbabalik ta rin mo sila. And then you will end up with line number 7. Na YA implying not V of A. By uh, double negation on one part of statement 6. Okay. Kaya lang medyo odd kasi yung double negation ay inapply ko lamang dun sa antecedent nung statement number 6. Kaya parang technically uh, parang hindi yung buong line 6 yung ginamitan ko ng double negation. Okay? Kasi double negation works only for a simple proposition. But anyway, that's fine uh, as long as it is clear to us what happened there. And then now we got this specific statement. Okay? Pero ano yung nasa conclusion? Yung nasa conclusion ay may universal quantifier. Okay? But again, the, the thing there is that we want to show okay, for all x. So, ibig sabihin, kailangan mapakita natin siya sa lahat ng x. But luckily here, in our statement, if you go here, yung a na variable na ginamit natin is arbitrarily chosen. So si A, wala tayong pakalam, wala tayong re requirement kay A. Si A ay kahit anong element ng domain because it is born out of a universal instantiation. Okay? Kasi si A ay isang arbitrary element, parang nag-lottery lang tayo uh, dun sa buong elements ng domain. Si A, ay, uh, si A ay arbitrary, wala tayong specific requirements about element A. So therefore, we can use universal quantifier here. Or we can universally generalize statement number seven. Because again, statement number seven will work for any element A of the domain. There are no requirements on the element A. It's arbitrarily chosen. So I can use UG here for all X, Y of X implies not V of X. And the reason is from seven, universal generalization. And again, we can only do universal generalization kapag ka yung variable or yung term dun sa preceding statements ay arbitrary elements. Or in other words, they are born out of a universal instantiation lamang. Pero if in one of our arguments here, nag-existential uh, instantiation tayo o nag-EI tayo, uh, chances are hindi pwedeng mag UG. Again, nakakapag UG lang tayo kapag ka arbitrary yung term na ginamit dun sa preceding statement. Okay, uh, I hope that's clear. Um, any uh, any questions on that? Hopefully that's clear. Okay, let me just browse. Ito. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's end up with looking at some fallacious uh, use of uh, those, for, uh, those four rules that we have learned this morning. Uh, let's see. My question is, Mary Mitzi, safe po ba kung bubuoy na lang yung words sa rules of equivalence since walang abbreviation sa module? Okay, yeah, Mary, uh, Mary Mitzi, yeah. I guess it's safer kap na gamitin yung buong words sa rule of equivalence. Uh, lalo na kung hindi siya na-define sa module. Okay? Kasi parang kila Mary daw sa, mat, uh, sa AMAT 19 nila TR yung transposition. Okay? But yeah. But for me, it's fine kung, kung kaya ko namang hulaan <laughs> kung, kung, uh, kung ano yung ginamit. And it's not a big deal for me. I just don't know with your lab instructors 
kasi sila siya yung mag-grade ng majority ng inyong work. So, yeah. Pero kung TR or TP yung sinulat nyo, I can kind of make sense sa transposition yung nandun. Pero if you want to be safe about it, yeah, uh, you can write the entire word. Pero minsan mahaba kasi, no? Okay. Now, let me borrow five more minutes. If you need to leave for another class, uh, please do so. Tama nga ba? Ano tayo nag-start? 8.30, no? Uh... Uh, sorry, 9 time next start. So 9 to 10. So time na ako. So I should dismiss you. But let me borrow 4 or 5 more minutes just to wrap up. Uh, if you need to leave, uh, you can. And just watch the latter part of the recording later. But I want to, to end with the, with some erroneous uh, use of the, um, the rules, the generalization and instantiation rules. So for example, um, in using existential instantiation, you should use an individual constant that has not been used, especially if you have multiple existential quantifiers in your argument. So if you look at, say, example 38. So meron daw, there exists an x such that a of x and c of x, and then there exists an x such that b of x and c of x. Now, if this are your one and two premise, premise, so yan yun nasa proof nyo, okay? And then, so line number three, mag existential instantiation ka. So you can say A of A and C of A. And this is from one, existential instantiation. And then, so, uh, so line number four, hindi ka pwedeng mag B of A and C of A via two using EI. So this will be wrong. Bakit kaya siya, pwede, uh, bakit kaya siya mali? Or, uh, yeah. This is wrong, but uh, why? Any uh, volunteer? Any idea why? Nakasagot uh, ba Mary Mitzi? I think he already re re uh, recited. So I'm gonna go with Zyra. Zyra? Bakit kaya mali yung time for today? Yep. Ah. Um, yung sa una po kasi sa A of A po and not C and C of A, hindi po necessarily nag apply yung constant po na A sa next statement po na B of A and C of A. Uh -huh. Great. That's uh, perfect, Syra. Thank you. So kasi, existential lang. So halimbawa si A, siya yung ginamit ko na element o sample element ng domain na nakakasatisfy ng premise number one. Tapos yung statement number two, either exists an X, hindi ako sure kung si little a din yung, yung element ng domain na pinapatungkulan ng existence statement dun sa line number two. So hindi ako sure kung si A yung binabanggit din na there exists an X dito sa taas. Because again, our predicates now have, uh, have specific terms or subjects in them. So... Ang subject nito ay si A, siya yung nakakasatisfy ng 1. Pero yung statement number 2, nag apply lang siya sa specific elements ng domain. And I am not sure if little a is part of that subset of the domain that satisfies line number 2. So to be safe, you can say here, pwedeng uh, b, uh, b of little b and c of little b. And that would be 2 ei. Kumuha ka ng ibang variable na hindi pa nagagamit for another existential uh, instantiation. Okay? So, sinabi natin sa line number 4, kunwari si little b, yung nakakasatisfy ng premise number 2. Kasi existence lang sila. So, be careful when you have a couple of uh, existential quantifiers. Pag UG, walang problema. Basta inuna niyo yung EI, pwede kang mag-UI sa line number 4 using the variable A. Kasi nag-hold siya para sa lahat. Eh, yung statement number two kasi nag-hold lang din siya for specific element of the domains. And we are not sure if statement if there would be elements of the domain that satisfy both statements one and two. Okay? So be careful with double existentially quantified predicates. Now, ano pa yung mga fallacious use of... Um... Okay. Uh, remark number two is what I was um, stating earlier. Whenever your proof requires the use of both EI and UI, unahin yung EI. 
mag-declare kayo ng specific element na nakaka-satisfy ng existential quantifier. Okay? Kasi pagka nag-hold nag nag -hold na siya, pwede kang gumamit ng UI using the same variable. Okay? Uh, there's a question here from Victor. Is it possible for all the premises to be universal and the conclusion to be existential? Yes, Victor. That's fine. Uh, posible na lahat ay for all, tapos existential yung conclusion. And actually, I think that's easier kasi kung universal yung mga premises mo, mag UI ka lang all the way sa buong proof, and then dahil napakita mo na yung conclusion ay nag-hold sa isang arbitrary element, so posibleng existential din yung, uh, yung pwede ka mag-EG galing sa UI. Pero you're right. The other way around doesn't work. Kapag ka nag-EI ka na, hindi ka pwede mag-UG. Pero pag nag-UI ka, posible na mag-EG ka dun sa dulo. Okay? So I hope, at least, uh, kung naiintindihan niyo siya layman, in layman's term, mas makikita niyo na, ah, okay, the, the rule makes sense. Okay? Tapos ito yung sabi sa number three, probably related to, uh, to Victor's question. Bawal mag-UG kapag ka nag-EI. So pagka may there exists, so ibig sabihin mag-EI ka dito, P of A, hindi ka pwedeng mag-UG. Kasi alam mo lang, totoo siya sa isang, sa isang specific element of the domain. So hindi ka pwedeng makapag-conclude ng for all. Pero kung nag-start ka sa for all, pwede ka mag-for all ulit dun sa statement, for all say Q of X. Or pwede ka mag there exists an X such that Q of X. Kung mapapakita mo somewhere below na Q of A is true. So mula sa EI, pwede ka lang makapag-EG. Pero mula sa UI, pwede kang mag UI, ah sorry, mula sa EI, pwede kang mag UG, pwede ka ring mag EG. Okay? And I think ah uh, here last remark, um don't use an EI or a UG on a singular statement. Mhm. Mm anong anong ibig niyang sabihin? Ah, uh, don't use an EI or a UG on a singular statement. Let me see. Uh -huh. Yeah, I don't get what statement number four is uh, saying. Uh -huh. Yeah, maybe I can think about it. Kano ibig sabihin niya sa statement number four? Don't use an EI or a UG on a singular statement. Perhaps it is a single statement in your proof. Kasi dun sa proof natin, tinatanggal muna natin yung mga quantifiers and then we just get them back at the end. So I don't know exactly what uh, statement number four means, but maybe I can think about it and get back to you on Monday. Uh, on Monday, on Thursday. And then, yeah. Mm. And then let's continue on Thursday for the rest of the examples. But Daniel has a question. Is it possible to use EG with different variables? Uh, yeah, Daniel is asking, possible ba na magkaroon tayo ng E of A and V of B? Well, yes. Um, pero hindi ka pwedeng mag EG. So, alimbawa daw, sabi ni Daniel, somewhere in the proof, we came up with E of A and V of B. And then, Pusible ba na magkaroon tayo ng EG? Well, pwede ka mag-EG, pero be careful. Pag nag-EG ka, there exists an X and a Y such that E of X and V of Y. Kasi hindi mo pwedeng sabihin na there exists an X such that EX and VX. Okay? So, mali ito. Bakit ito mali? Well, ang kasi napakita mo, EA and VB are true. Totoo si A as si statement E kay A, totoo si statement V about B. So, hindi mo sure kung posible na si A ay mag-equal kay B. Kasi yun yung nandun sa, yun yung magiging meaning ng statement na to. There exists an X such that E and V are both true for X. But what you have shown in your proof 
ay totoo si A sa isang uh, si E sa isang element A at totoo si V sa isang element B. But we don't know if A and B are equal to each other. So I guess the existential gen uh, existential generalization that you can make is that there exists two elements x and y such that e of x and v of y magka iba sila. So again, we were not able to show na true etong parehas na to sa dalawang elements ng domain. Okay. Uh, I hope that's uh, that's clear, Daniel. Okay. So it seems that on Tuesday, on Thursday we still need to look at probably one more example or actually proof of invalidity na tayo sa, sa Thursday right on schedule and probably we we will do a uh, proving next week na kung hindi natin matapos ng maaga let me just uh, browse through uh, the worksheet again kung kailangan ko bang i-delay Okay, we might need to delay uh, worksheet number four. Kasi yung dalawang examples ay, but let's talk about it more on Thursday, depending on ano yung matatapos natin. So siguro pwedeng uh, is extend yung deadline ng worksheet number four or bawasan yung items para sa kanya. But I guess that's it for now. Uh, unless you have some pahabol na questions. Sorry, overtime na ako ng two minutes. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then thank you for getting up this early. Uh, enjoy the rest of the day and let's see each other again on Thursday. Oh, by the way, those who recited, kindly put a comment on the meeting chat so I know that uh, you recited. Uh, before you leave, meron bang member ng, hindi pa member ng teams na nagsagot verbally? Para ako, para ako na yung comment Wala naman. Uh, okay, Rhea? And Elisa. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, anybody else aside from Rhea and Elisa? Okay. So if there are none, then thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you so thank much, sir. Stay safe. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.